Hi everyone, this is Spencer with MemberPress, and today I'm going to be going over how to set up Stripe as a payment gateway in your MemberPress options and how to troubleshoot some basic issues with it. To start off, I'm going to create the, the gateway. You'll notice I already have a few gateways created, but I lack a Stripe gateway, so I'm going to come down and click Add New. First, you're going to want to select what type of gateway you want. In this case, I'm choosing Stripe. Now, you can name it to be whatever you want. In this case, I just want it to be something simple like that, just credit card. The next thing that you're going to want to do is enter in your secret and publishable keys. This is essential to connecting to Stripe. Now, in this video, I'm going to be utilizing the test mode. And so you notice that when I click that, it toggles live and test. So if you're going to use test mode to test a few transactions, just be sure to switch it back to live mode and that your secret and publishable keys match up with the live secret and publishable keys. So to find these keys, you're going to need to go to your Stripe dashboard. Here's my Stripe account, and as you can see, it is a test account. And to find those, you're going to need to go to your account and then account settings. After going there, click on API keys. Here you'll find both the test and the live secret and publishable keys. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy those and paste those in. So you'll notice that these say test. That's a good way to know that you got the right one. Otherwise, the other keys say live. Now after you've selected and entered in your keys, you're going to want to make sure that you have entered your Stripe webhook URL, which is what's listed here. So, you're going to go ahead and copy that, and then we'll I'll show you where to put that into Stripe. So again, in this same viewpoint of Stripe, you're going to click on Webhooks. Now, I've already created a, a few, but I'll show you the basics on how to set it up. So, you're going to click Add Endpoint. Here is where you're entering that URL that you copied earlier, and you need to make sure you select which mode it is. I've already pre-created a live and a test webhook. You need one for both. They don't work both ways. So in this case, it would be test, and it's recommendable that you enable this option to have you receive all the events. And then you hit create endpoint. But in this case, I've already created them, so I'm just going to hit cancel. And those are my webhooks for this case. And so this test one is going to be the one that's going to be utilized when I make some transactions. Um, through this new gateway that I just created. Now I'm going to go over a few other things. This option here, the Force SSL, what that means is it will make your site PCI compliant. So what that means for your users is that they will feel more comfortable entering in their credit card information on your site. But to use this option, you have to have SSL or TLS installed on your site. I don't, so I have to leave that unchecked. Next, you've got these options. The show payment label, show payment icon, and show payment description. You can choose to show those things or to hide them. So I'm gonna go ahead and click update and then go to a registration page where you can see that updated. So I'm just gonna refresh the page here and that gateway will appear. So here's my, <clears throat> my credit card and it's Stripe and it says pay with your card via Stripe. Now these things are not editable, but you can choose to show them or hide them. So let me just show you that real quick. So let's say for example that I want to hide the payment icon, which is this. <clears throat> then I could do that and that won't show. Or I could hide the payment label, which is the name that you have entered in. Or you can also hide the payment description, which is what where it said pay with your card via Stripe. So in this case, I'm going to try to hide that one. So I'm going to go ahead and update my options. And then I'm going to go back to that page and click refresh. So now when I click on it, that is not showing up. Now I'm going to go through a transaction just so you can see how that works really fast. So this is going to be... Oh.
And remember, in order to do all of these test transactions, you have to have everything set up 100% correct. So I'm just going to enter in some test transaction numbers. And for Stripe, the easiest credit card number to remember is just four and then a bunch of ones. The expiration date can be any date in the future. And the CVC doesn't really matter, but I just like to do it one, two, three. So I'm going to go ahead and click Submit, and then we'll go through what happens to that transaction. So that transaction went through correctly, and now I'm going to show you, both in Stripe and in MemberPress, where that transaction should show up. So in MemberPress, let's go over that first. If I go to my Subscriptions tab, I should see a new one-time non-recurring subscription that I just barely created. So, here's that user that I created, and here's the transaction. Okay, I can click on the transaction number, and that will actually show me that <clears throat> the, the status is complete, that the payment went through, and everything's great and dandy there. Now let's go into Stripe and see where it is. Okay, so back to Stripe. What we're going to do is you'll be able to find this transaction in your Transactions tab under Payments. And it's, it's going to be the most recent one. So here's that transaction, and it went through correctly. Um, you can see that it's the same that same user and that a, a successful charge was made. Now I'm going to go through some basic things or errors that could happen and some things that can help us as a support team help you resolve those issues. So to start off, I'm going to go back to my options payment tab because there <coughs> I'm going to find there's an option to enable debug emails. Okay, so... Under My Gateway, you can enable Send Debug Emails. Now, a reason why you might want to um, enable this is if for some reason your transactions aren't going through correctly or your members aren't showing up as active, then you can enable the debug emails and go through some test transactions and see what emails you get back as an administrator. Review those emails and see if there's any errors that may be causing the issue. If you're unsure about what the email exactly means, then be sure to send that to us to the support team of MemberPress and we'll look it over for you and see if we can find anything out. Another issue that can happen is if you don't have the Stripe webhook URL set up correctly, um, that the payment goes through in Stripe, but in MemberPress your user's transaction is marked as incomplete and their subscription is inactive so they don't have access to your site. So I'm going to teach you really quick how to resend webhooks. So in the case that you just entered it wrong for some reason, you can go in, make sure the webhook is correct, and then you can resend the webhooks. To do that, you're going to want to find that transaction. So in this case, let's say this is the transaction that didn't go through correctly. I found it, and now I want to resend that webhook. So after f locating the transaction, scroll down to the bottom of the page where you'll find the events. Click on the events, and this will open up um, a nice pretty little thing that looks like this. Kind of confusing, right? Well, if you scroll down here, you'll see the webhook details. In this case, this one, one went through successfully, and in some cases it may show up as successful or it may not. In any case, if MemberPress doesn't have the information, but in Stripe it does show as going through correctly and that the user was indeed charged, then after checking the webhooks, you can click this button to retry all webhooks. And what that will do is resend any webhooks that were made. Now Stripe will automatically send during a period of I think of about 24 hours your webhooks, just in case there is an issue. But if after that period of time it still hasn't gone through, you can do that. And so you can see I just resent that one, and this one is still marked as pending. Um, but later on, that will be marked as a success. So that's how to resend webhooks, and that's a great thing to be able to do. If after doing both of those things and you still can't resolve the issue, please send us a support question and we'll be more than willing to help you. Thank you.